sleep hygiene. I'm so tired of hearing about sleep hygiene, sleep hygiene. That's what everybody's talking about. Oh, you, you got, you know, you're dealing with insomnia from benzos. Have you had, a, have you tried sleep hygiene? Sleep hygiene doesn't work, guys. It doesn't work. And many of you hearing this are agreeing. You're not. And you're going, he's right. He's right. Right. Now, I'm now, uh, if you're talking about some sleep issues, you know, having trouble sleeping a little bit. Okay. That's one thing. But when it becomes insomnia, meaning when you start to fear not sleeping, when you when your head hits that pillow and you start buzzing and lights start flickering under your eyelids and your mind starts racing and, and, and muscles start twitching and your muscles and limbs start jerking and you start to feel this pulsing energy and you start to have to get up and take a pee every 30 minutes to an hour, when you find yourself counting down the time, that's insomnia. When you're afraid of not sleeping, Welcome to insomnia. What is insomnia? Let's understand it. Insomnia is really, it's kind of a health anxiety. It's a rumination, obsessive rumination disorder fixated on sleep by which the limbic system fears sleep, rather fears not sleeping, and responds the only way it knows how, guys. Right? The limit, Unfortunately, the limbic system doesn't go, oh, he's or she is having trouble sleeping. Let me hit her with an extra dose of GABA or oxytocin or, or some, some kind of relaxation hormone. No, it says, oh, my God, this person's afraid of not sleeping. Let me hit them with some cortisol and a bunch of adrenaline. Let me activate that hyperarousal system and ramp up that stress response. Now what's happening? Now can we sleep? Of course not. It's, it's 10 times worse now. You know, your limbic system has just kind of screwed you, screwed you over here. You know, it had the best intentions, but it's not helping, which is what happens in benzo recovery, right? It's It's the classical benzo recovery situation. The more we worry about the symptoms, the hard, harsher things get, the more overactive uh, the limbic system becomes. It's a complete uphill battle. But sleep hygiene doesn't work, guys, because sleep is not something you can do. It is not something you can do. It's something you have to allow. And that is a fundamental a point, and, and right now, as I just said that, it sounds too simple. Let me explain. It'll make a lot more sense here. Sleep is something you have to allow. You have to accept. You have to surrender. You have to get out of your way and stop having resistance in sleep and creating sleep pressure. If you can do that, your limbic system will calm down and the sleep drive will reappear. Now, I had the, I, I don't know if there's many people I've ever spoken to that had more sleep hygiene than me. And I deal with a little bit of OCD. So believe me, when I fixate on something, I fixate good. I fixate real good on it. And I had a lot of teas. I have a cabinet full of about, I don't know, 10 different types of tea. I would buy them in bulk. I'd get like 10 packs of like chamomile, L-theanine, green tea. You know what I mean? Ashwagandha. I was mixing. And then I started mixing these teas. Then I started having these teas two or three times. You know, I would, I would take them early in the day, like 5 p.m., and, you know, I'm going to try to go to bed, let's say, by 1030. And then I'd have another cup at like 7 or 8. And then one right before, you know, around 10. And I would I would do a lot of deep breathing. Sometimes for an hour, I would use the blue light blocking glasses, you know, so I could kill that blue light serotonin producing uh, effect from the lights. I changed bulbs in my house and made them warm at 2300 Kelvin. Uh, I had meditation apps. I would turn my AC down to 68 degrees. I tried a heated blanket. I tried the weighted blanket. I tried cold showers. I tried warm baths. I tried um, I tried Benadryl. I, I made concoctions of this stuff. Magnesium. I tried everything. And the more I tried, the worse things got. Now, initially, some things you can have a little luck with. You know, oh, a little melatonin helps. Again, this is it depends on what level of insomnia you're dealing with. And in a very low level it can be helpful. Although really the consensus here amongst the specialists are it has more to do with placebo. It really does. It has more to do with you believing it will work, right? If I give you a placebo and say, this is the most powerful sleep aid. Oh, this will definitely work. Here's a bunch of studies on it. And you just go, wow, I am totally invested in this. I believe it's going to work. It will probably work for you, right? To a point. And what happens is you start to create a bunch of resistance. It's a lot of pressure that you're building here. If I do these things, 
it's almost like your like sleep is a lock and and you're 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 using all these little keys or maybe a series of locks right to open this door so you can sleep and i'm the benadryl and the melatonin and the and you're locking you're unlocking and then what happens is one night one of these things don't work and you start to panic and you go oh my god the, the melatonin oh i'll try more melatonin more benadryl double up on the t's you know uh let me shut off my 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 TV an hour before bed and you do all these things that really you don't need to do that they act in themselves the act guys and this is hard to wrap your head around I know believe me I, I didn't believe any of this at first either um, I, I just it just didn't seem feasible but the, the act of doing all of this it arouses your limbic system and it says the limbic system begins to say you know first off the limbic system is like the the ever obedient watchdog so it starts to it's noticing this. Why is she, why are you, why is he or she doing all these little things to try to sleep? Is sleep a problem? Should I be concerned? Imagine you're sitting on a couch next to your limbic system, right? Your your little obedient watchdog, who already barks at everything. You know, a, a a car drives by, he barks and runs up to the window. I mean, this is what your limbic system does. But you're sitting there, you're watching TV, and then you get up and you just look out the window. You know, peek out the blinds, and you sit back down. And a couple minutes later, you get up and you turn on the porch light and you look you, you look out the window again you open the door a little bit you crack it you look out you lock it shut it lock it sit back down get back up go out look out the back door look out the back window you just keep doing these little things they're just little things and eventually your limbic system starts to say hey what's going on i'm noticing you're getting up a lot you're doing a lot of these things what are we in danger something wrong and you're going no 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 this is fine i'm i'm doing this so something won't be wrong that's why i'm doing this that's why I get up and look out the window. So so some so that nothing will bad happen. You know, nothing bad will happen, I should say. So your limbic system starts to like any almost anybody else would start to go, oh, hold on, now you're making me nervous. Now I'm starting to get nervous. Why, why do you keep getting up? Right? So then what's the limbic system do? Reacts with hyperarousal activity, cortisol, you know, norepinephrine, adrenaline. This is what starts to happen. And then of course you're not gonna sleep then. Right. And so these things start to become conditioned in the brain over and over again. After a couple nights of poor sleep, maybe you only wake up a lot or you, you, you know, you wake up, you can't get back to sleep or you can't fall asleep. Then one night you don't sleep at all. And that's the scariest thing to the limbic system. It's never really endured that. It says, what is that? What is going on here? Not sleeping. That's and then, you, of course, you read the studies. Oh, my God, lack of sleep. If people who only get six hours of sleep are 80 percent more likely to you know have dementia or something like all these crazy studies which by the way pretty much all of them have been debunked a lot of it's propaganda by uh people invested in selling you a pillow sleep aids i mean i know it sounds conspiratorial but i mean ugh, you, you guys let me look at big pharma right like these things happen there's there's a the whole market behind these things you know it's uh, you have an insomnia try a new pillow yeah and then who's that work for 0.01 percent of the population has insomnia it's not what's happening here and believe me the the specialists on sleep are are th there's a a sleep revolution happening right now and sleep hygiene's old news it really is now don't get me wrong i want to clarify something sleep hygiene's good because all hygiene's good right so sure as you're you should wind down in the evening and then and, and you know, there's just certain things that make common sense. Like if you're trying to go to sleep, don't put on a thriller, James Bond filmed loudly. You know what I mean? Don't don't get don't do certain things, obviously. I mean, yeah, calm down, relax. But you don't have to turn off your television an hour before bed. You don't have to sit in dark and do breathing meditations and sleep apps and, you know, like I said, ear pop plugs and all these. Eventually, my friends, it will work against you. And, and I'm I know some of you are listening to me and saying he's right. It's already worked against me. And when the wheels start to come off and you really start to panic, that's when insomnia shifts into uh, overdrive. And now none of this works. It don't matter how much damn tea you drink. You could be sitting there, you know, uh, what they call you're, you're wired and tired. You're exhausted, but your limbic system will not let you sleep. You're so close to it. You're so sedated on the melatonin and all of this, but you just cannot fully log out. 
and you're waking up in the middle of the night and now you're having myoclonic jerks, which is this, this sort of uh, it's a, a sleep reflex of the limbic system, like a startle response where you start to fall asleep and actually your brain waves start to shift too fast. You ever have that happen? They shift too fast and suddenly you jerk or you jolt up or you feel like you hear something crash or break around you. You know, I've, I've heard it so loud. I've gotten up and looked around the house thinking, you know, what are my pets like knocked something over and broke something? No, it was in my damn head. You know, uh, you feel like you're falling asleep and suddenly you shake like as if someone walked up to you and, and shook you real quick. Right. And of course, you get that jolt of adrenaline and now your, your feet are tapping and you're buzzing. And so, you know, even CBTI has problems with this. CBT is cognitive behavioral therapy for insomnia. They'll tell you things like, oh, well, you know, you know, sleep, you know, sleep, um, you know, sleep hygiene to a point, And they'll tell you, you know, lay in bed. And if you're not asleep in 20 minutes, get out of bed. The problem with that is you start to count down as soon as you hit the bed. Well, the, well, let's step back. There's a bigger problem there. The first problem is the bed has become a conditioned fear response. I mean, how many of you guys can be falling asleep, uh, say, in your couch, on your recliner, and you're, oh, God, I'm about to fall asleep, or maybe even crash out for a minute, and you get up and you walk to the bedroom, and as soon as you lay down and hit the pillow, it's like someone plugged you into a light socket, right? You Suddenly you're, like, buzzing. That's the hyperarousal system because it's associated bed with danger. This is where we go and we don't sleep because of the sleep boogeyman, a.k.a. insomnia, a.k.a. the limbic system doesn't even know what the hell that is, never dealt with that, doesn't understand it, doesn't have the intellect to understand it. This is where our minds and the webs that we weave make these things such a bigger problem, right? Health anxiety starts to run amok. Anxiety levels increase. You know, not sleeping is traumatic. It is. It's a low-level kind of trauma. So sleep hygiene doesn't work because it creates pressure, you know, and like I say, good, good regular hygiene is great. But here's the thing. If you are laying on the couch and you want to have a tea, let's say, to help you relax, that's fine. Have a tea. But don't drink the tea because you believe it's going to make you sleep, right? That's the conundrum. If you want to beat this, step one is sort of removing all of this stuff. Remove all of it. No more sleep hygiene. If you want to watch TV for bed, watch TV. Be reasonable. Don't put on something, like I said, an action film or something that's going to rile you up and get you going, you know. Um, but, yeah, you know, be reasonable. Do what you always have done. That's the, that's the message. Do what you've always done and, and provide no sleep resistance, right? I'm not taking mel melatonin because I believe it's going to make me sleep. I'm not taking the Benadryl or the, in, or the heated blankets, or the weighted blankets, and I don't need it. If I want to use it, fine. If I enjoy it, fine. Right? But do not use it as a, as a kind of um, a, a desperate attempt to control sleep. Sleep cannot be controlled. The more you try to control it, the worse things will get, guys. Hear, hear what I'm saying. The more you try to control it, the worse things will get. So when I was going through it, and I was going through it bad, I mean, days not sleeping. I mean, I, I called my doctor. He said, I think you need to go to the hospital. You may have a neurological problem because I was having these myoclonic jerks, these hypnic, hypnic jerks, your, these jolts, and they were happening in the daytime even. And finally, I found someone who was a, a brilliant sleep coach. He reframed everything for me. And in a way, I it clicked because it's the same philosophy or psychology approach that I use with my benzo people, which is sort of to say benzos create this boogeyman in your brain. It startles your limbic system in a very similar way. Your limbic system responds in a very similar way as insomnia, jolting you full of all these cortisol and adrenaline, hyperarousal activity. It's like plugging you in. Now your symptoms are through the roof, right? So we're trying to avoid that. We're trying to lull down that part of the brain and disconnect from it and get out of our way so that this the limbic system can do what it always does, assess our bodies, assess the environment, and come to the conclusion that, hey, I think we're going to be okay. I think we're safe. And once it does that, the sleep drive is coming. It's like a train, guys. It's like a train. It's circling every five or ten minutes, and it comes by. And it and and if you know, we should be waiting there, patiently, effortlessly waiting for the train. But the problem is, everything we're doing is sort of 
creating this situation where the train can't stop. The train just, it, it, it's like the, the things that we do somehow speed up the train and the train just rolls right by. Now, after I worked on my insomnia and I realized all this and I stopped everything, no more sleep hygiene, no more teas, nothing. Now I do nothing for sleep. Zero. All I do is I wind down in the evening. I mean, if I want to meditate and do the things I do because they're healthy, yeah, I do all that. I'll do that if I want to. But most nights I don't. I'll sit on the couch. I'll put on, you know, something boring or something I want to watch. And I wind down and I just, and I just wind down. And in fact, some nights, many nights, I don't even want to sleep. And the sleep drive comes back even stronger. It's funny how it works. It's like I actually want to stay up to finish this movie and I can't. I fall asleep. On the other hand, if I turned the movie off and I put on meditation music and lit the incense and lowered the lights, and I, I would lay there for hours. Wasn't going to happen. Wasn't going to happen because that was sleep resistance. That's how bizarre this stuff works. When you, when you realize that your sleep drive is a train coming by every five or ten minutes. And, I mean, I would have moments where I was sitting there and it was, I know, say uh, 5 till 11 p.m. And I was like, man, I'm really awake right now. I'm surprised. I thought I'd be more tired. And, you know, I would say, Dave, don't worry about it. There's no pressure here. I don't care. I don't care. If I sleep, I don't sleep. Don't, don't even worry about it. You've never worried about this before, right? You've never watched a clock and played this game before. Why am I doing it now? So I just let it go. 11.05 comes by. I'm out. Just like that. Boom. Sleep drive comes, and it's like someone drugged you. That's what it does. That's how normal people sleep, Right? And these things, they take time to work out. And in this video, I'm more or less just addressing the sleep hygiene. I don't, I'm, I'm providing you with some clues to, rec to treatments here, but I will definitely elaborate much more depth uh, in some other videos. But this is more just to kind of, you know, give you some psychoeducation here and maybe uh, try to have you look at this a little bit differently, right? Um, not as something you can control, guys, something that sleep hygiene. Uh, will only kind of make worse if you get obsessive with it. Like I said, if you want some tea, if you want a little this and that, fine. You know, I think it's great to do some yoga or deep breathing or stretching and wind down in the evening. It's perfect. Have a glass of chamomile tea, maybe, if that's your thing. Uh, some people with benzo withdrawal need to be careful with that one, you know, because sometimes you're very sensitive to GABAergic stuff. But, but again, remove the effort, guys. The first thing I did to start sleeping again is I dropped everything which was scary because I relied on it and I thought I needed it. But but really, it wasn't working. It was making me worse. I dropped all that sleep hygiene and guess what? I slept. Couldn't believe it. Net woke up the next day and I thought, what the hell? How is this possible? Must be a fluke. Next night, I did nothing again. Just sat on the couch, watched a show, tried not to think. Well, I shouldn't say I tried not to think about uh, sleep because the more you try not to think about something, what happens? You think about it more. I made peace with it. It was it was a lot of acceptance commitment therapy. I, I was accepting, working on my acceptance, and I was committed to doing nothing. That was my commitment because I understood doing was the problem. So I accepted the situation, and I committed to doing nothing. I just committed to just being normal, you know, quote, unquote, what I always had done. And once I did that, I slept again and again and again. And I slept good for the next three months after a three or four month incredible wave of insomnia. Just ended, boom, just ended for me. Now, the limbic system is going to have reflexes, so you might have a great reaction initially, and then what happens is, you know, there's little kinks that you got to work out. I mean, it's, it's, it's sense, it's a, in, in a big sense, it's a trauma response to all of this, right? So you're going to have nights where you're not very successful, but I said, that's okay. Maybe some nights I don't get enough sleep. Maybe some nights I still struggled, but I didn't try. I didn't force it. I didn't rely on all my old mechanisms, you know, and I can go in so much more depth on this, all my mechanisms that I did. I had, there was a pattern when I couldn't sleep, what I would do. I'd get up and I would try this. And then if that didn't work, I would try that. And then I would try, you know, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, right? All night, frustration, anger, emotional, you know, oh God, tomorrow's going to suck. I can't believe this. Why me? You know, all of that. I accepted it. I committed to doing nothing. I got out of my own way. I can't, I took a very more go with the flow, Zen mindfulness attitude. And lo and behold, things started to improve drastically. And not, and now things improved on a way that even the little phobias I had, you know, I used to have it in my head for years that, you know, 
I would sleep pretty good until I had something really big going on the next day. You know, I had to fly somewhere. I had to travel. I, I was going on vacation. I, oh man, I put all this money into this nice beach resort and God, I, it's really important. I get sleep because I got to wake up at 6 AM. I'm going to make a two hour drive and I really want to be rested for this. You know, I want to get the best out of this vacation. And of course, guess what? The pressure on me for that, I wouldn't sleep. It's, it's kind of like performance or test anxiety, really. Right? You ever have test anxiety? You're, you're, you know everything. You studied. You're completely confident. You walk in there and you get deer in headlight. The anxiety actually starts to work against you. I mean, that's what's happening. And so now even that response, which is something I've had most of my life, it's almost gone. I almost never have that now. And I've had that for years, even well before benzos, right? So, again, I mean, I, my instinct is I want, I want to go further with this, but I've already gone 20 minutes now, and I don't want to get into treatments. I'll save that for another video. But I think I've given you some ideas here. I think I've helped you look at this thing maybe a little bit differently, and um, hopefully I made some sense. And, and I'll do another video, and we'll talk more about how do we – how do we engage this? How do, how do we perfect the art of doing nothing and allowing sleep to return? And what do we do about when we have bad nights? And, you know, um, there's a lot to be explored here. There's resistance and there's counter resistance. The idea that, uh, and this will be the last thing I say on this, you know, the idea that resistance is or effort is if I drink this chamomile tea before bed, it'll help me sleep. And the counter resistance is if I don't drink this tea, it will help me sleep. You see? That's the trick, guys. So it's so even by doing nothing still is in your mind, in the back of your mind, an effort to sleep. You can't have any more sleep effort. You have to be completely at peace with it. And that is the toughest part, by the way. That is the struggle. How do I make peace with this? You know, so I'll put out a video uh, soon and we'll explore that a little bit deeper. But I've given you some things to think about uh, and kind of I hopefully made a pretty good argument why sleep hygiene, quote unquote, doesn't fully work, especially when you have uh, legit insomnia.